In previous videos, you could see us dealing with mimosa, an invasive tree species that is all over our land. We cut them because they are very fire risky and we want to open space for native trees to grow. The whole region burned down in 2017, so we want to become more fire resilient. Last season we cleared a big patch behind base camp and in the previous episode we transformed it into a living area. Now we are going to take out a bigger patch that also will help to understand better how to deal with these trees. Welcome to a new project camp update. So at the moment it's getting closer to summer, a hot summer again, fire risk is coming and we want to take down many of these ones so the view will change drastically. There are a few reasons we do this. So the first reason is this one. The distance between the buildings and the mimosa. This is not allowed, so we will need to clear a whole radius around the house. So reason two that we want to clear out is that we want to make more space for fruit trees and native trees to grow, how we have done already in this area. And the third reason is that we create more space, more openness, which means we have more space to relax and some air can flow during summer. So we are now under the electricity line, which less than a year ago has been cleared. And unfortunately, they are already growing back up to two meters high. As you might know, mimosa is a big topic for us. And not only for us, many people in the region are struggling with this. Because what do you do with such a flammable, fast growing species on the land? What do you, how do you cut it and how do you process it? We are gonna use our land to experiment several options in this. Let's have a look from the top. This is the area we are going to work in. We decided to divide the patch in two and use different approaches to deal with the mimosas. On this area, we will debark them with manual tools, so the trees die slowly. It's an experiment to see if this approach makes sense also for the rest of our land and may be helpful to others with the same problem. We will also need to clear the smaller area below the electricity line but not likely that we can debark here. The other side we will fully chop down with chainsaws. It's a rough but more straightforward approach, needed to create a fire security area around the office, before summer comes and the risk of fire increases. The downside is that the trees will resprout soon, but for the moment we need to take fast action. Okay, so today is the day. It's very windy, but we are gonna start anyway. We're gonna start with the area that we're gonna strip the bark of the mimosa down. Let's have a look if there are some people to join me. I think with this team, we can make it. Woo! Maybe it's a good moment to introduce two more people of our team that you already saw in other updates. I am Maridia. Hi. I was happily born and raised in Brazil, but now my adventure is here, on the other side of the ocean. I came to Europe to study screenwriting, and by some mysterious and magical means, I arrived here. As a writer, I'm loving this experience. It is so different from the days I spend alone behind my computer. Also as a person in search of meaning, this project and these people have been a beautiful gift. Hi, I'm Sean, I'm 37 and from the United Kingdom. I work as a freelance software developer and I'm passionate about environmental issues and trance music. I came to Project Camp to get experience living in a community and to work in nature learning new skills completely different to what I do back home, just tapping away on a keyboard. I don't really know what the future holds for me, but I do know that once the season ends I'm planning to come back to Portugal and look for some land of my own, and hopefully some of the new friends that I've met here will come and visit me. So to start off with we're going to walk through the area and clear all of the small thin dead at mimosas, there's quite a lot of them and that will clear the area up for us so that we can work properly. Then we'll remove the brambles so we've definitely got a proper clear area and then after that we will start on stripping the mimosas. As Sean said we are taking down the dead mimosas first and leave them on the ground. The principle will be that if they are staying up they dry and are more prone to burn. On the ground they will rot so less fire risk and it helps to build up the soil. It's kind of cool to walk into this area together and crack all the dry sticks. Sounds are amazing. Feels good, no? Feels really <laughs> super satisfying. I feel powerful. Yeah. <laughs> this 
understand? Yeah. I found an old. Yes, yes. Look at this baby. Oh. We have to protect them now. Marilia, what do you have there? Oh, I forgot the name in English. Barbed wire. What? Barbed wire. Barbed wire. Barbed wire. Barbed wire. Iron barb. Uh, brambles. <laughs> and look, they go down, down, down. It's kind of dangerous, so we have to watch out. Now that we've cleared the small dead mimosas, we're going to mark out the area and measure it so we can see how much we've got to do over the next few days. One eighty. Oh, it's so like nine meters or something. <coughs> yeah. 430. Well, now we know this side is 25.6 meters. Meters, meters, meters. <laughs> How much? 470. Uh, 470 again. 870. 740. 570. Hey, hey. How much? 23 meters. 23? Ooh. Ooh. Five, 588 meters squared. Half an hectare. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. After clearing and measuring, we are placing the dry trunks to create water retention lines. This will tidy up the place, help them rot, and retain water that is good to build the soil over time.
Now it's time to start stripping the bark of the mimosa. We also want to know how much it takes to debark this area and what tools are better for this task, so we can have useful information for our research on how to deal with them. We don't need to take all the bark out, just around one and a half meters from the ground will be enough. It's kind of cool to see and to hear. Your own technique. Mm-hmm. And your own weapon. The, the knife technique. <laughs> it's more maneuverable. Manure manoeuvrable. Maniobrable. <laughs> Hola. It's going inside your glove. Eh? Uh -oh. No no. Watch out. Not inside. All of the park. This one's here. This one is messy. Yeah, um, some of the small ones are hard to get the bark off cleanly. They, um, yeah, especially with this saw. We also could have a nice conversation. No, it's impossible because everything you said, Guy would put it in the video. <laughs> now I don't feel safe. <laughs> I'm annoying you. Whoa! Are you happy? Very much so. <laughs> you can make a carry on this. You could say the bark. We don't even sleep. The roots in the bark, that's why we have to take it out so they die.
We just finished debarking this big patch of mimosas. One of the advantages of debarking is that the mimosas, in theory, shouldn't sprout. Other advantage is that we can keep shade for a while and also it kind of looks cool. But there are some disadvantages as well. For example, we have to debark them one by one. We only can do it in the spring because in summer the bark gets really stuck to the tree and it's quite difficult to take out and they, took, they take a long time to, to actually die. One other aspect is that we are not really sure if the thin ones should be debarked or not. We've used a number of tools for working on the mimosas and I'll start with the ones that I wouldn't recommend. The axe. Sometimes it's helpful but you don't really have enough fine control uh, maybe a bit too big for the job. The machete, definitely too big for the job. Like you could maybe use it to cut around and get your initial cut in the wood, but in the bark, but it just doesn't really work very well. Then I've used this most of the time, but again, I wouldn't really recommend it. Um, with the sawtooth on the on the knife, it kind of is just hard to sort of get behind the the bark and peel it. Things that we've used the most are these secateurs. Um, the advantages are that they've got a relatively thin sharp blade so you can really kind of get in behind the bark but as you can see we've broken them. Um, they are stuck, they don't, we don't even need to put the sort of latch on now, it's just stuck. So ideally, and we did order some of these, but they didn't arrive would be a knife just a small knife this is Ali's knife that we've borrowed but thin sharp blade you can cut into the bark at the top really easily and you can get in behind it and peel it off so if you're gonna do this yourself we'd recommend yeah a small sharp knife okay the debarking is done but before going to the other side of the patch we will clear a small area below the electricity lines here Ali will explain the approach so we've reached a point right below the power line where the municipality last year they cut all of the mimosas to keep it away from the, the power itself and you can see now in one year how much they have grown and it makes it a bit harder for us because there's a lot of dead wood and stumps in the bottom but also a lot of new growth. What a mess. What a mess. Tricky situation. So here you can see what happens when you only cut the mimosas. They just keep sprouting all over the place. Uh, we will have to work on it again next year probably and still more seasons. I would like to see how long do they take to die if we keep cutting them over and over. We've now almost finished on the half of the mimosa patch that we've we were debarking. We've got one job left there. We need to go and find all of the little oaks and other native species that we'd covered with buckets to stop them from getting damaged and build them some proper triangles. Ooh Happy saving oaks? Yes. <laughs> okay, so the debarking area is finished. 
It took us around 15 hours with an average of a team of five people and we debarked 500 trees. A lot. But this is not the only area that we are taking on in this Mimosa patch. We have another site, but we're going to take it a bit different, with a bit more power, but with the same team. Okay, we're now in the second half of the big Mimosa patch. Still much Mimosa to go. This is also the area where the ruin is, where we have the office, where we need to clear all around. Again, we are starting by making some space to work properly. Brush cutting, breaking and putting down all the dry sticks and taking out the brambles so they don't punch us in the butt. Oh, this is huge, Julie! <laughs> Bottle with still with, li still with liquid in it. <laughs> Found a little lovely friend, the barbed wire, always with us. You never know where you might find it. Well, right now we are moving some dead mimosas, taking out some brambles to make a safe area to work because it was kind of messy. Now it's beautiful. Hey guys. <laughs> We already cleaned the whole thing, now it's a nice area to work. Now we can start hunting the mimosas. Okay, so we only cut a couple of square meters and we still have a lot to go. But we already have huge piles of green matter that we don't know what to do with. And this is always a bit of a big problem. But today we're going to use one new shredder.
The shredder is cool for us because the green matter stays on the land and helps to protect and build the soil. But we can only shred the green tops and the thin trunks. For the bigger ones we will need to find a different solution. So we finished with the flat easy part, now it's time to go into the steep, more challenging part to start cutting the mimosas. Okay, we realize that to work on the steep part, it's better if we start down at the office. It's very hard and annoying to take the trees out from the top, but if we start from the bottom, we can take them out easier. <laughs> okay, I, I, I was using all my body uh, <laughs> weight to do it. So as you can see, 
we got a lot of mimosas now they are everywhere you cannot walk you cannot see the stairs so now it's time to process them and make this place look cleaner processing party processing party So we finished most of the mimosa cutting. Now the last steps is just cutting the last tree and then make everything a bit nicer. Yay! Ooh. We have some piles of bramble that we have to move. This pile of dead wood that we also have to spread and make nicer. And also these trees are two in the way of the office. So we're going to cut them and make a nice path. Now the last three. All the chopping is done, but we have a lot of green matter to get rid of. Luckily, we have some help from a neighbor who will take care of all the trunks. It would be better if we could keep them in the land, but for the moment we prefer to take them away and reduce the fire risk. As you might see, we are not used to seeing such a big machinery over here. Television. Best thing is the camera adds pounds, doesn't it? <laughs> huh? Best thing is the camera adds extra pounds to you, which is obviously beneficial. A lot. Yeah, I thought it might. But only to your biceps. <laughs> <laughs> so with all of the wood chips that we got from the tops of the trees that are already decomposing, we are going to use them to spread around the, the land we just cleared to protect the soil and also to make the pass around the kitchen a little bit nicer. So as you can see, the piles are gone, we scrap them around, the area and the pads, 
And now the job is finally finished. Fuck. Looks nice, fluffy. I wish I was a fungus to live <laughs> down here. <laughs> Have fun editing this. Okay. So we've finished the experiment with this little part of Mimosa on our land. Both the section here where we debarked it and the section here where we got busy with a chainsaw. But there's still loads more Mimosa on the land, so we just want to see which approach works best. So now we're in the debarked area. It looks quite cool, although maybe not so dramatic from the top, but you can see that we're already starting to see some changes here. The debarked area is changing colour, we've got some resin coming out of the wood, but it's going to be an experiment that takes a couple of years and we're looking forward to see how that turns out. So now we're in the section that we took care of with the chainsaw. And yes, from down here it does look ugly with all of these stumps. And we're going to do extra work here. We're going to plant some native species, put down wood chips, improve the soil. But the reason we did it like this is we had to do it quickly. Fire season was almost here and the office was very close to all of the trees. So we needed to protect the office. We're dealing with the wood in three different ways. The tops, we'll use those for wood chips. And you can see this, this pile here is turning brown. We've already done one big batch of wood chips, but someone will be kind of a shredder to help us with these again. And the reason for that is that we'll use the wood chips to nourish the soil. Along the water lines is where we put all the dead wood. And that will help retain the water when it rains. And as they break down again, it will nourish the soil. And then the third thing is the big trunks. And you'll have seen that the truck, the neighbor came with the truck and helped pick up a load of those, but we've got more. And again, the neighbors, ever so helpful, are gonna come and take the rest. You may be wondering why we've cut down all these trees. And this is the reason. The mimosa is a pioneer species, but it's also an invasive species. So after the fire, they grow back really quickly and they crowd out all of the native species like the oak. The native species are part of the ecosystem and they're also more fire resistant. So we're gonna promote the growth of all of the little oaks and other native species, little fruit trees and things that we've found so that they can grow with enough light and space and hopefully we'll have a forest of all native species at some point in the future. So our experiments here are done and we're hoping that they're going to help inform how we do with all of the mosses on the land because this is only a small patch and not only for ourselves. We hope that this research will help other local people and people in the surrounding areas to also deal with their mosses in the most efficient, quickest way as it's an invasive species in this region. But for now, we're done and we have this wonderful view. In the next episode, we will continue working on the storage container, this time making the interior storage. If you like what we do, you can support us on Patreon and you can watch the next episode without ads. If not, you can subscribe and help us with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.